Tom here from Warren Systems and Unify 7.161 has been released, well, a little bit ago, but I want to talk about the big changes that came within it. And those changes affect a lot of things and now, well, make some of my older videos a bit irrelevant when I say this feature is not supported. They have added a lot more features in terms of like policy routing, but I want to talk a little bit about the details of how it actually works because saying it has it and does it have the functionality you're looking for is a really important distinction. So I want to talk about how some of these new features have been implemented. There's also a very welcome feature in the new UI. We had it in the old UI, which was the ability to select multiple ports to adjust them. So you can make a group change to a block of ports on a Unify switch or even and all of them at once, but they took that out in the new UI. But this time when they brought it back, they just didn't just give us a feature back. They really polished it up and put it back really nice. So I want to talk about some of these new enhanced features that they've done. It works quite well in a few details in case you're wondering where something's missing, including the Wi-Fi statistics page they added and how to get that turned back on. Because if you're like me, I don't know when, but at some point I may have checked this little box that you need to recheck. So we'll be talking about where that is. Before we dive into details of this video, let's first... Are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering, storage, or virtualization project? Is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly? Not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. It is currently May 9th, 2022, and this was released 18 days ago. And about an hour ago, Unify Network Application 7.1.65, this is release candidate, was released. And I bring it up just because if you're having any of these issues with it, fixed memory leak affecting users of self-hosted version of network application while using VPN features, fixed rate issue applying to a UXG Pro, fixed USW adoption due to invalid IP subnet and layer three static routes, fixed rare issue with UXG G Pro adoption, fix various issues with creating and traffic rules and routes. I want to admit that if you found some of these issues, which I did not, and I've mentioned this before, we don't really deploy or have within our managed stack for our clients any of the Unify routing equipment. Now, I have some that I'll be using for a demo here, but if you are using it, these are some of the fixes that they released, well, an hour ago uh, in the release candidate in case you're having any of these problems and need them addressed. Now back here to the features in 7161, the Teleport VPN. I'll be showing that with my Unify Dream Machine that we have for a demo, just kind of give you an idea how that works and talk about some of the new details because yes, it has WireGuard in the back end, but it, there's some important distinctions to how it works. Add traffic routes. This is the traffic policy routing. Now this is interesting, but there's a little bit of details that it doesn't work well with VPNs, which is an important policy the way it does, but we'll show how that works as well. Add switch port insights and bulk port editing. This is a really cool feature they added. I like the way they brought this back. Improve search filters, devices, notification, improve traffic statistics, improve Wi-Fi statistics. I'm going to talk about this in the way they enhance the UI. I just like the way they've really done the dashboard and I'm finding myself, well, really liking the new changes they've made to it. I was definitely harsh on it in the beginning, but it was also a weird deployment because it incrementally got a little bit better, but we kept having to switch to the old UI. I don't find myself going to the old UI now. I can pretty much find everything I need in the new UI, which is great. Now, there's a lot of little things they've added, such as add Memo Common for Clients page, add AP Widget for Unified Clients, and a lot of details and bug fixes. And I don't have time to go over all of them, but of course, I'll link to this so you can read through them. Let's actually take a look at these changes. The first thing I want to mention is my Dream Machine is running Unify OS 1.12.19. As you can see, it's up to date. This is a really new release, and this already updated because I have it on auto update to that new release of 7.165. But the Teleport VPN was there in the 7.161 as well. Now let's talk about Teleport VPN. People were telling me, Tom, you said there's no WireGuard support. And as I said in my old videos, I did say there wasn't proper WireGuard support. And now this becomes a fuzzier topic. The Teleport VPN uses WireGuard on the back end. That's great. 
except it has a dependency on Ubiquiti's cloud to work. So here is the teleport dot UI dot link. Now, the goal at Ubiquity appears to be to really simplify IT. That's their little tagline and slogan. And by making things invisible to the user, how the back end is working does a great job of simplifying IT. But the problem comes in of it's still dependent on their cloud and it doesn't have a normal wire guard configuration menu in here. This is a bit challenging. So you have to come into it understanding that it's dependent on their system. And at present, the Teleport system only supports the Wi-Fi Mine app on Mac OS, iOS, Android here. So you're not able to simply use this as a standard WireGuard VPN, but you can use it for the app and it's slick. Maybe if there's enough requests, I'll do a video on it, but it's pretty straightforward. You copy the link, send it over to your system. There, well, I should say phone right now. Eventually, I believe on the roadmap is to add it to other systems for connectivity, but it's still, to me, it's kind of strange that it forces a dependency on there. And this is something I also want to note. The not in the notes, but really important feature that is available now or feature removed feature, maybe they don't force you to register the consoles anymore. I think that's great. So they've removed the registration for the Unified Dream Machine. They've removed the forced registration for the cloud key. But, and this is where I'm not here to slam Ubiquity for this, but this is just the changes they made. Great and thank you for, you know, putting back the way we wanted it set up because it used to not require registration or had a way to bypass it. And now they put the way to bypass it. But for those of you asking things like, well, what about UID and OpenVPN? I'm still doing some testing with UID, but UID is really neat and interesting to tie identity management to the Unify system in order to easy deploy different connections. So you can, you know, check users and set things up on their phone and say, connect to this Wi-Fi. But back to my problem I have, now you have to set up UID with their cloud platform to talk to your device. And I'll be diving into this in a later video um, in the future when I've kind of sorted a few more things out. I think it's clever. It'll even generate an OpenVPN config file for Linux. I've tested this but there's not a way to do it through the Dream Machine itself. You have to use their cloud to talk to your Ubiquity system, which requires a tie-in and registration again, in order to get the OpenVPN registration to create an OVPN file. I you know, know they're removing this registration forcing, which is great, but then to use these advanced features, you kind of have to go back to being registered and tied into their cloud. Now, from a simplicity standpoint, I think they did a good job of making it easy so you can be less technical and get this deployed, which is a big goal Unify has. And there's not an easy way to do that without a cloud tie-in because then people would have to understand more things about how to forward ports and set things up in a lot more details. So I think it's a good place they're going with it. But for those of us that want more advanced features and want to be able to put our hands on them without tying it to someone else's cloud, that makes a big difference. It's also of note, Unify doesn't have the clearest of roadmaps, which makes people like me who have relationships with our client built on long-term support, recommending this being a little hesitant because if I don't know exactly when the end of life on this product is, how do I build it into integration? And if Ubiquity decides to change your mind of how long they plan to support the product, we then have to re-engineer a completely different solution later. This is just the perspectives I have on it. And I wanted to at least mention this with the way the VPNs are handled on there. So you can check the box that they have open VPN support or WireGuard support, but because it currently appears to be not your standard WireGuard support, it's tied to the Ubiquity cloud for everything. It's a little bit concerning. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here on the Dream Machine is the traffic routes. This is actually great. They're adding policy management, but We'll go down here to teleport and VPN and we'll scroll down and we see that I've got a couple of VPNs activated on like my test network right here. If we go over to traffic management and we want to create traffic routes, they've done a great job. I can go domain name, IP address, internet. I can make specific changes and say, I would like the source, all devices, default devices. You can, you know, build groups and set things up here, set up. Do I want them to go out as a policy over the default WAN one or the backup WAN two? But here's the issue. While the ability is there to select policies and websites and choose backup WAN or your main WAN, there is no ability to choose VPN. The problem becomes when we have business clients who have, for example, a unified dream machine and then they want to connect a site to site with a, another like IPsec VPN. Maybe that site to site doesn't need to have all of the traffic send over there. So a split tunnel. So you're not sending everything back hauled back to the main site, but you need certain websites because of IP restrictions to 
go through that. That option is missing. The second use case that's missing, then this is what a lot of people ask about, especially in the more advanced home users, um, maybe they want to hide certain traffic and they want to send it over a privacy VPN. There is no way to set policies to set outbound VPN routes. So this becomes kind of a challenge to do that officially through the UI. Someone will always point out that there's ways to modify the system from the command line. And I'm always quick to point out that by doing so, you can eventually break the UI because if you do something in the UI, it breaks the command line or vice versa by disconnecting it. So the idea is to eventually, because this is a good start to have the policy routing as they do, but also add the features so you can tie it to policy route over a VPN. So now I can say they do have policy routing, but not policy routing for VPN. And that's why the details matter so much about when you're setting these up to make sure it fits your use case. If this is not a use case you have and you just want to be able to split traffic over your main WAN or your secondary WAN, well, that feature is now available in the unified dream machines. And well within the Unify 7.165 software. Now let's talk about some of the UI element changes. I really like that they have the connection, five gigahertz, Wi-Fi 5, two by two MIMO. So you have more information than you did before that is easily displayed so you can see how things are connected. I just really like the way they keep enhancing this UI. And the bigger enhancement though is right here. If we get to looking at something like this US Pro 24 PoE and we click on it, we have under ports, a new option called Port Insights. And this lets us look at all the different ports and more of the details, including where you have things plugged in, whether or not they're PoE and being able to select group support. So if we select all of these like this, I can then, if I want, change all the profiles to any of them. Now, one UI element I really wish they would fix is when you hit any of these pull downs. Yes, I can see the scroll right here, but not everyone notices it that everything is down here when you're setting up all of your VLANs. So you don't notice it immediately. And if you're not aware of it, you would be like, well, I don't see my VLANs. Why aren't any of them showing up or the other networks that you define? You just have to scroll down a little. I know it's minor. I notice it, but it's a frequent question I've seen posted in forums of for some reason they're not showing up. Well, they are. They're just down a little bit. But nonetheless, the fact that we can now select these and hit close port edit, see all the details of the ports. I think this is just a great option. One thing worth noting on some devices, such as the UAP in wall HD, we click on this, we click on insights. There's no port insights available for these particular models. So you don't get the port insight option, but you can still do settings on these ports. If you need to change them, you just have to change them individually. There's only four ports, so I don't really think of it as too big of a deal. But even though they left it off of the in-wall HD, you can click on port insights on these small Unify Flex switches. So even though these only have, well, five ports, they can still be group edited, which is nice. They've added this feature uh, to this particular switch model. And before we get to the Wi-Fi statistics page, I've already seen a few comments on people saying that their Wi-Fi stats page was well, broken and not displaying anything. Collect historical data must be enabled. This is just under system and you just check this box. This collects the historical data. There is a note, I believe in here that says, don't do this on the first generation cloud key and maybe even the second generation. I'm not sure what its processing level is in terms of how many it can support in terms of if you have a large deployment, if this is a great idea. We're using a self-hosted controller for this with plenty of RAM and CPU available to no problems with collecting uh, historical data. So of note, if this isn't checked, you won't get your Wi-Fi stats page. And this is the revamped Wi-Fi stats page to let you know which AP devices are connected to, signal the vague experience where I don't really know all the functions that go into this in enough detail to explain it. Um, but I think it gives you at least some baseline, like are they having a good or bad experience? I would say, you know, anything above 90% is generally good Wi-Fi experience. But I do like that it does have the TX3 tries and drops right here, RX rates that you're seeing on it, and what memo they're connected to. So it gets you some ideas and more troubleshooting. And again, this memo is repeated as it is in the client listing to show how things are connected. Now, as I said, there's a whole lot of other little bug fixes and minor improvements, but it's putting a lot of polish on it. I feel that the whole seven series that Unify has gotten to is way more mature and much less buggy than we've seen in previous versions. Of course, I did mention the 7.165 release that fixes a couple, well, VPN for self-hosted controller issues. But overall, I'm going to say I like this version. I've been using it and it has not caused me any drama. That's a lot of times what people are looking for is does it work, doesn't break, but it not only works, it adds a lot of these enhanced features and it's still 
you know, where Ubiquity stands alone and having a self-hosted controller without any license fees attached to it. And now that they've eliminated the forced cloud registration on some of the devices, well, that makes them that much different as well, where companies, you know, really try to force you into the cloud with the minor noted exception of UID. If you want to use that platform, it's tying it to the cloud to talk to your devices to manage identity management. I will do a deeper video on that as that product comes along. I think it's really interesting. I think it does do a lot of what their goal is at Unify of simplifying IT. And it's nice when you can tie your door controller, your Wi-Fi, and all of your VPN management to a single place. And it does have tie into your other authentication service like Active Directory or G Suite. I believe those are features that they have right now. I'll dive deeper into that video uh, later. It's been something we've been setting up. We have a whole demo site set up with UID um, at our office. Well, a demo version of it so we can make sure we understand exactly how it works so I can do that video and you know bring all the information to you on that. Leave your thoughts, comments down below. Head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion and let me know what you think and thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.